Hi guys and welcome to How To Carping. You join me on episode number two and today what we're going to cover is we're going to look at rods, yeah? And how you can select a rod, a carp rod, um, without paying over the odds, yeah? Um, also, we're going to look at a few rigs that I'm going to tie. Um, I'm going to do the hair rig and also I'm going to tie the IQD rig. Yeah, which is a very interesting rig. I do like that one and I can't wait to get to use it. Um, what we're also gonna look at is a little bit of um, watercraft and how you can find fish um, using their feeding bubbles and swells and stuff like that. Okay, um, right. So guys, please like and subscribe to my channel for more how-tos and also for my main blogs. Yeah, uh, Carping Forever UK. Please go over to my social media as well. Face, uh, I'm on Facebook, um, Carping Forever UK, Scotty P. Um, and then I'm also on Instagram, uh, Carpy Scotty P. Uh, sc sorry, Carpy underscore Scotty P. Um, and then on um, Twitter, I'm just, I think it's Pocock underscore Scott. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, feel free to contact me and ask me any questions and I will try and help you as best I can. Right, anyway, let's get on with the episode. Right then guys, so you join me while I'm uh, having my little walk around the lake. Uh, I'm doing my own little bit of watercraft here to pick my swim. Um, I've popped down to my local lake today just to film my um, how to carping episode number two um a tiny little thing show there um so yeah so what i'm looking for on the lake is um feeding indications fish showing so feeding indications would be um bubbles uh, rising up to the surface of the water um now fish showing that could be oh there we go look at that perfect timing let's just stand here a second just there you see them all of that all them little ripples there fish feeding oh there we go little tiny show there for you um but that was a that was a little skimmer and i think that might have been what them bubbles were just then as well but my point i'm trying to get at here guys is don't just turn up to a lake and go into the best swim because you know or you've been told that that's the best swim have a wander around find the fish so fish shows um you've got a few different types um so I mean, they could just come up and be supping um, debris or food off of the surface of the water where you'll just about see their lips. Um, then you've got other shows where you've got what we call a head and shoulders, where they literally just poke their head and shoulders out of the water um, and you can just about see them. Um, other indications of fish being in your area are full shows where the, the fish fully jump out of the water and um, and then make a big splash and you obviously um, see that and they're in your swim and hopefully you're gonna you're gonna be in for a good session. Um, you can also see them on a on a nice hot summer's day. You'll see them with their backs on the surface. Now, they'll look, oh, there we go. Let's see what's going on there. Um, they almost look like, um, like a wet stick just breaking the surface of the water, but then you'll see their uh, tail swell behind them, um, which would indicate then you've got a fish on the surface of the water, um, which then you might want to look at changing your tactic and uh and you know surface fishing um stick 
stick a cheap little dog biscuit on the end, you know, something that's going to float. Chuck a few little cheap dog biscuits out, get them feeding, and you'll have a, I mean, off the surface, you can have, well, anything. People have done videos and shown videos of catching 30s, 40 pounders off the surface, you know. Right. So there's nothing on this side of the lake that I can see predominantly that's making me want to fish here. So I'm going to go have a wander around to the other side of the lake um, and see if I can find a swim over there. All right, I'll join you back in a little while, guys. Tight line. Well, the fish are certainly, certainly not stupid in this lake. Um, this is the out of bounds area where we're not allowed to fish. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot of feeding activity down here. Like I say, they're not silly. They seem to be held up in this little corner here. Um, I've got to admit, I did want to get into swim number one, hopefully, because it's just been opened uh, due to COVID-19. But unfortunately, there's somebody already fishing it, so I can't get in there. Um, but they're definitely held up in this little bay here. In the outer bounds. Oh well, let's move further up the lake. Um, see if I can find any other signs of feeding. So guys, we're going to start with the hair rig, yeah? So for the hair rig, all you're going to need is a size 6 fang x hook yeah it can be a size four if you prefer or whatever size hook you prefer or shape of hook as well um and then i'm going to use the camo tech yeah soft uh, soft coated braid 20 pound from fox all right a little bit of shrink tubing and your pulling tool yeah right let's get started so what you need to do is pull off a good few inches of the camo tech soft take your scissors you need a good pair of scissors to cut through braid because braid is very very um tough so we're just gonna chop that there like so so then you're gonna want to strip your hair yeah so you want to make it a good few inches long, yeah? Because you want to make sure that you can fit your boilie on there. So I'm going to use my teeth. You can use a stripping tool. Oh. Yeah. So with your hair, all you need to do is make a small little overhand loop knot. So just make a loop like so. I don't know if you can see that in the... There we go. Yeah. I'm just going to twist that over itself, forming yourself a little loop. Yeah, I'm going to use my baiting needle. Yeah, so you've got a loop kind of similar to that. I don't know if you can just about see that. Um, place your baiting needle through, hook it over your loop, close the gate, and then just pull down on the knot. Yeah. And you're left with your hair looking like that. Yeah? All right, so then you're gonna take the tag end. Yeah, this bit here. There you go. And we're just gonna snip that off nice and close to the knot. Tidy it up. There we are. And you're left with your hair rig starting to look like that, yeah? Then, what we're gonna do is place a boilie on. This is gonna help with the placing of um, the hair on the, on the hook. So we just loop that over our um, little loop that we made for the hair. Close the gate, just like so. Push the boilie down, yeah. And then we're just gonna use a simple little tiny boilie stop. 
just to stop it from coming out while we're tying our hair. And then we just pull that down in like so. Yeah, so that's now starting to come together nicely. We're then going to take our size six Fang X hook, right? And we're going to tie a knotless knot. We're going to pass the uh, end of our hook link through the eye of the hook, back of the eye of the hook, yeah? All the way down, and we're going to place where, we're going to stop where we want the boilie to sit, yeah? So I'm going to go about, about there is where I want my boilie on my hair rigs, yeah? And I'm just going to hold that in place with my fingers. I'm going to go down, I'm going to wrap round the shank of the hook seven times, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah? Hold that in place with my fingers like so. And then I just simply place the tag end now back through the eye of the hook. Yeah, and pull that nice and tight. Yeah, I'm gonna use my pulling tool to make sure that that's all nice and tight, just like so. Yeah, lovely jubbly. All right, so that's that bit done. Next, what you're gonna to wanna to do is take your shrink tube in, yeah, You want to measure it, so I'm going to want about that much. Yeah, and we're going to cut a little bit off, just to cut it down to size. That's as much as I use on all of my rigs. And we're just going to slide that down the tag end of the hook link. Yeah, slide it over the knot. Right, now our kettle's boiled. I'm just gonna hold that, steam that all down. Now, watch your fingers, it is hot. Ow, caught myself. All right. And then you're left with your hair rig looking like so. We'll test that in the palm of our hand. See if it wants to flip over every time. And it does, lovely jubbly. Right, and then lastly, you just choose the length of the hair rig that you want. Yeah, pretty happy with that. So all we're gonna do is just tie another overhand loop knot. Yeah, just so that we can connect it to our um, quick change swivel. Just like that, wet it down, there we are. Then we're going to take the tag end, trim that off. And then you're left with your hair rig looking like this. Yeah. Right, so let's have a look at how that's going to look on your setup. I've got a leader here. All right, so all I'm going to do is whack a little weight on there. Uh, that one will do. Yep, so we put that on the uh, lead clip, just like I say. Come here, move that down. Wet your lead clip, place it over so it can just drop off. Yeah, then we're gonna take our hair rig and this is why we use the loop. We use the quick change swivel, yeah? We just loop that over there, like so, and it just literally clips on to your rig, just like that, yeah? 
So the way I'd have this set up uh, for my hair rig is I'd have my leader attached to my main line. Yeah, coming down the leader, I'd come to my lead clip. I'd have a three to a two, two and a half to three ounce uh, lead on my lead clip. Yeah, I use the lead clip so that uh, the fish can drop the lead in uh, in weedy situations. In most situations, to be fair, it makes it a lot easier to land the fish, to be honest. Um, but also, if you do crack off, it is a safe feature for the fish because that will just pop off like that and the lead will just come off. Yeah, so the fish isn't dragging um, three ounces of lead plus all the weed that's probably then clogged up all around your leader. Uh, we, we don't want to crack off, but at least if we do, let's be safe about it. Also, this um, leader, uh, sorry, lead clip, isn't um, attached in any way, shape or form. So it's actually um, designed as an in inline lead clip. Yeah, so it will just pop out. And if, again, the unfortunate crack off does happen, um, your lead clip will simply just run all the way off the end of your leader. So again, if your lead hasn't discharged from the lead clip, your lead clip will discharge from your line, yeah? Just makes it that little bit safer, guys, yeah? We will touch on carp safety and carp care uh, in, a, in a future video, so please stay tuned for that. Right. Hello, you carpy lot, and welcome back to How To Carping with Scotty P. Um, like I said earlier on in the video, I wanted to uh, talk to you about rods and how to select your rods for carp fishing. Um, as you can see, I've got two different rods um, stood next to me. I've got my main carping rod, yeah, and I've got my spot and marker rod, right? Now, my spot and marker rod, that comes with me everywhere I go, um, purely because it's a very stiff rod, so it's the... Um, it's the Chubb Spotter Marker Rod, yeah? It's four and a half pound, uh, four and a half pound test curve. So the test curve is the weight that it takes to bend the rod to 90 degrees, yeah? Um, it also dictates how stiff your rod is, yeah? Um, and what you want, what you're looking for in a, in a Spotter Marker Rod is a very, very stiff rod. Um, you're gonna be using braid, and what that will do is allow you, when you cast your marker lead out um, and you feel it down and you start pulling it back through the, uh, through the water to find your hard spot, it will allow you to fill the bottom of the lake a lot easier. So with carp rods and marker uh, and spot rods, you've got a lot out there on the market and you really don't know what you're looking at and I mean they can can get very expensive um, I fish on a very tight budget if I'm honest so I look for the best quality rod but at the lowest price yeah um, so one thing that I was taught when I very first started fishing was not to look at brands to look at your brands like you would at your clothing brand so you've got your Adidas your Nikes your Reeboks your night clothes are more expensive yeah it's exactly the same with rods. You go with a Daiwa, the most top of the range rod, you're gonna be looking at a um, thousand pounds, yeah? But you can get the exact same quality rod, yeah? For example, the Sonic Vader, right? The Sonic Vader X, I believe it roughly, um, if off the top of my head, retails at 78.99 a rod, um, which, as you can tell, is a, a lot cheaper than a thousand pounds a rod, um, but, it, it has the same qualities. It's a carbon fiber rod, yeah? It's 12 foot, right? And it's three and a half, three and a half pound test curve. So it is a very stiff rod and it makes casting quite easy, yeah? So we'll have a look at that rod in a minute. But what I'm gonna show you now, right? As you can see, my spod rod is completely dismantled. So we're just gonna have a look at how we set a spod rod up. So. This is my spod rod, yeah. It's the Chubb spod rod, yeah. 
and like I said it's a four and a half pound test curve very very stiff rod yeah the test curve will also help you work out is how quick the rod will return back to its natural position yeah right so to start with obviously I have no reel so we need to put a reel on yeah all right so I'm gonna come a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing so here is your reel handle mount but there yeah. all we're gonna do is make sure that that's loose enough so I can take my spod reel yeah and all I do is just keep loosening it off until it will fit in to where I want it that's it and then we just tighten that up using the tightening nut at the back of the rod until you can't tighten it anymore so what you don't want is for that to come loose and then your reel to start wobbling while you're trying to cast your, your spod mix out yeah right so the next bit is as you can see i have braid already loaded onto the spod reel yeah so i'm going to unclip that from um the line clip and it's over the bail arm can you see that yeah so when I flick the bail arm over, it's as if I'm casting. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the line all the way through each eye. And then we just close the bail arm over and we're ready to attach our spot or marker. And all I'm gonna do now is, as you've seen me do before in previous videos, is just tie quite a large overhand uh, figure of eight loop knot. So I'll make a big loop, yeah, go around my fingers, go around the loop, go back through the hole, yeah. Start pulling that down nice and tight, that's it. Always wet your knots, guys can't stress that enough yeah wet it lock it right and then you just pull that down all nice and tight that knot's not going anywhere take our scissors and we're just going to cut the tag end here just snip that down just to tidy things up a little bit not for any particular reason right Now, set it up for your spod rod or spom rod. You're gonna take your spom, you're gonna feed your loop, you're gonna feed your braid through your shock leader, yeah? I'm then gonna put the braid over my spawn, feed it all the way over, yeah. Hey, come here. Get it over that, right. And I'm just gonna let it pull down nice and tight and then that's it, my spod rod is ready to go. Yeah, so on with regards to the uh, shock leader, you want probably about three to four rod lengths of shock leader, yeah? So it wraps around your reel, maybe three, four, as many times as you can, to be fair. Uh, but I use the uh, Corda ready-made shock leaders um, and they seem to work just fine for me. Also, when you are using your spod and marker rod, don't forget to have yourself some finger protection. That may sound crude, funny, whatever you like to think, right? But it, honestly, you'll be, you'll be a fool if you don't use um, some form of finger protection for your spot and marker rod. You're casting with braid, yeah? 
and braid will cut through your finger and if I'm honest uh, I did once forget my finger glove I tried to use rubber gloves it didn't work it cut through the rubber glove and it gave me what was like a paper cut um, on my finger but it was really really deep it was horrible yeah so ever since that day um, I was using the Corda uh, finger glove which is just like a bit of um, oh, what do you call it wetsuit glove yeah it just feels like it's been cut in half cut down just slip it over your finger that's perfect yeah it doesn't come off stays in place I went and brought myself um, the gardener yeah where's my hand there we go I went and brought myself the gardener uh, finger protector glove yeah it wraps around my wrist and just ensures that it's not gonna not gonna slip off or move but it protects my finger perfectly. That there is leather, and obviously uh, it's gonna take a lot to cut through um, leather. <laughs> All right, guys. But yeah, the next rig we're gonna tie is the IQD rig. So what I'm gonna use is the Corda IQ2, yeah? Again, I'm gonna use a uh, Nash Fang X uh, size six barbless hook yeah so to start with what you're going to need to do is take a good few inches plenty to work with this is a very stiff hook link um, and i have found it difficult to tie these at times yeah so you've got yourself a good length there so the next thing we're going to want to do is take our size six Fang X hook, place that there a second. We're gonna form a loop in our hook link, just like so, yeah? And you're gonna want the tag end running up, I want that loop a little bit bigger actually. You want the tag end running up the shank of the hook. So it looks like so. So we're gonna form what is called a whipping knot, yeah? So we're gonna use this part of the uh, loop here to go around the shank of the hook, right? Um, and I'm gonna go around seven times, but you can go around as many times as you're comfortable with, right? So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven. Pull that down. Nice and tight, wet it, there we are, there we are, that's pulled down nice and tight now, yeah, it's not left out where I want it though, there we go, right, so then we're just going to wriggle that down, sorry, no we're not, we're going to take that tag end off. There we are, just like so. And then we're gonna wiggle the knot down to where we want it on the shank of the hook. Yeah, there we are, just like so. Right, then what you're gonna wanna do is take a bait screw or you can use a mini bait swivel as well, yeah? Right? And slide that down the tag end. Yeah? Just like so. Right. Then we're going to pass the tag end through the back of the Iada hook. Oh, missed it. There we go. We're gonna form our loop that we want for our D. Yeah, just like so. We're gonna hold that in place with our fingers, like that. Yeah, and then I'm gonna to to move my big fingers down. And then we're gonna do seven, well, I'm gonna do seven wraps around 
the down the shank of the hook. Like I said before, you can do as many as you feel comfortable with. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, and then I'm gonna simply just take that back through the back of the eye of the hook. Yeah, wet it all down before I pull it tight. Okay, and then with my pulling tool, I'm gonna pull the knot nice and tight. There we go, just like so. And you can already see how aggressive that is gonna sit. Just like that, yeah? Right, the next thing we're gonna do is make the hook link the length we want it. So with this one, it's kind of, um, I want it a little bit shorter than my usual hook link, so I do have a preferred length. So it's about two to three inches. A little bit longer than that then, there we go. And again, I'm just gonna tie a simple overhand And again, I'm just gonna tie a simple overhand um, figure of eight loop knot. Oh, yeah, book it, get round there. That's it. Okay, let me just take our baiting needle, loop it over over the uh, fluorocarbon, pull it all down, wet the knot as normal, and pull down tight. Yeah. Pull it all nice and tight there, and there you have it, just like so. And then what we're gonna do is trim the tag end. As always, there we go. All right, and that is it set, ready to go on your rig. What I would do though, just before I put that out, is flip the kettle back on. Steam it all nice and straight, okay? So two seconds, I'll do that for you now. So you can see how it looks. I just steamed it down nice and straight there. Yeah, so that's how we're gonna want it. So we can just put a little curve in it there. Yeah, to give it that little bit more aggression and then we test it in our hand, and that is just gonna to wanna to turn over straight away. It's not even got any bait on it yet. Right, so. So then, when, when that boilie's sat on a deck, it'll just sit there like that, just hiding that hook, yeah? Because what you'd do is you'd critically balance that hook bait, so it's just like a wafter, just sitting there proud over that hook link, yeah? But you can also guarantee that it's not gone into any weed, any um, silt or anything like that. Um, I'll show you quickly how I'd have that set up. So this is the helicopter lead system that I use. Yeah, it's just um, a Corda heli system, heli safe system, sorry. Yeah, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this little bead off here. Yeah, keep hold of it a second. So I just take one of the Corda quick link swivels and I slide that down the end of the leader all the way down towards the lead. Yeah, I slide it over my um, Corda safe zone um, bead system. I slide it over my Corda safe zone beads. Yeah, and just leave that by there. All right. And then what I'm gonna do is the bead I took off earlier, I'm gonna take that bead, I'm gonna place it back onto my heli system. 
yeah so I just go from down the bottom there and slide it up on to the safe zone bead yeah now that I can move up and down wherever I want Wee, there we go so I probably have it about there normally yeah away from the lead all right and then you simply just take I'm going to use just for a bit of peace of mind a bit of um, shrink tubing just to place over the uh, the quick change swivel yeah so I've just put a bit of shrink tubing over the um, loop that, uh, the figure of eight knot that I just made I'm just going to simply click that on clip that on to um, my quick change swivel and then all I'm going to do then is just simply turn that on and just steam that down so I've got a little bit of an anti-tangle property. So I've just steamed that down, just so that I've got a little bit of um, anti-tangle property, just keeps it away from the leader on casting. Um, and also when it comes and flows down to the bottom of the lake, it will just make sure that everything's pushed away nicely, especially as you can see that nice boom that it's got on it. Yeah, all right. And that will be sat out there. Just like so, waiting for Mr. Carp to come along and take that. Now it's gonna, as you can see, it's gone straight into my finger as soon as he's lifted that up. Yeah. And that is how simple that rig works. You don't need a lot of uh, materials for it and it's a very very effective way of fishing yeah you're using the heli system so that if you're um fishing on say um what do they call it silt yeah then that's going to plug in yeah that can plug in as deep as it likes because then you know that your bait is there yeah it's going to run up and hit that bead and that's where it's going to stop yeah and then like i say you're going to critically balance your hook bait so test it in the margin like i always say yeah and what you want it to do is kind of flutter down like a butterfly yeah onto the deck all right right then guys tight lines so this is my main carping rod setup. I have the um, Sonic Vader X rods, uh, three and a half pound test curve. Yeah, and I also have um, the Shimano uh, Big Pit Aerial XTB reel, uh, 1000, uh, sorry, 10,000. Yeah. Um, so, why did I choose this rod? So for a start, I got it quite cheap. Um, I actually uh, got it off of a friend second hand when uh, I first started getting into uh, fishing. Yeah. Um, and also, like I said, it's, it's an amazing rod. Um, I mean, I can cast the distances I need with it. It's, it's perfect for playing fish with. Um, I mean, if I want to have a bit more fun, then I, I take my uh, two and a half pound test curve um, fox rod that I've got um, but this one it, if I'm going and I don't really know the lake is perfect because if there's weed and stuff like that it's strong enough to uh, to get the fish out of the weed or out of the snags yeah um, now the line I'm using on there is um, the 15 pound synchro line yeah and I've never had an issue with it. I think it's a really good line. It's nice and heavy. Yeah, so it sinks to the bottom of the lake quite quickly. 
and it really hugs the uh, contours of the lake so it gets everything out of the way um, yeah so what we're going to do is we're going to set this rod up for a helicopter lead, uh, helicopter led leader system okay so like i've done before i'm just going to feed it through i've opened the bay alarm i'm going to feed it through each eye of the rod So, so I've closed the bay alarm. Now again, all I'm gonna do is a simple overhand loop knot, but not as big as the one I made for my spod. Yeah? So all I want is one probably about that big. Nice little loop. Yeah, we're gonna go round the fingers, making your first loop. Yeah, and go round the loop again. and then back through the hole, yeah? And we're just gonna start pulling that down nice and tight. Don't forget to wet your knot, guys. Pull that down nice and tight. And there you have your nice figure of eight loop knot. Right, we're gonna get the scissors again. And we're gonna cut, trim, and tag end. Just like so. Right. Now, as I showed you earlier on, this is my helicopter leader system. Yeah. So I'm going to take my loop knot. Now this is why I always tie a loop knot because it's so much easier to set your rods up for different uh, fishing situations. Yeah. So I'm going to thread my loop knot through there, just like so, through the leader loop. Yeah. I'm bringing the leader up, pass it through the loop. Bring it. Oh pass it through the loops not take it back out of the loops <laughs> yeah and then just pull it down nice and tight onto the main line and that all I need to do now is attach my rig attach my lead and that's ready to go out so lastly I just want to talk to you about why I chose my reels um, again like I said I had to look for the best quality reel for the lowest price, yeah? Um, so I went with the Shimano Aerial XTDs. Um, I'd been looking for about three to four months, reading all of the um, reviews on each uh, low, low costing or low budget reel, um, you know, and this one had uh, two shielded ball bearings, which in the rest of the other reels that I was reading up on, they all only had one. Um, and I felt that may be slightly better, slightly more, and it is, it's a slightly more smoother um, reel to, to pull back in um, and to cast. It's, it's a beautiful reel to cast with, um, perfectly balanced. And I mean, it, it really does suit my rod, to be honest, I, I like it. Um, yeah, um, my spud rod. Now I've gone with a totally different um, reel. Again, I was looking for something um, more second hand which I managed to get to be honest um, so this is the Okuma uh, spot X spot reel yeah and it is I mean it is a brilliant reel lovely reel to cast um, I mean if you're using it as a marker marker rod just slight little turns you don't need a lot yeah little turn on the front cut and you can start beating out the foot of line each time, yeah? And it has a really quick retrieve on it, yeah? Perfectly weighted for my rod, yeah? And I can cast that to the distances that I need to get to. But anyway, 
for now, guys. Tight lines. Thank you for watching, guys, and I really hope that this video has helped you. Please like and subscribe to my channel for more how-to carping. Yeah? Leave me a comment in the comments below if there's anything you'd like me to cover in um, my how-to carping videos, please add that to your comment and I will try and cover it in my up and coming uh, episodes. In episode three of how-to carping, we are gonna cover fish care and fish safety. And I'm also gonna show you how to find spots using your marker rod, yeah? Stay tuned for more of my main blog, yeah? Carping Forever UK with Scotty P where I'm gonna be uh, taking the missus for a day session. Um, I'm hoping to hit uh, Linear Fisheries, uh, one of their lakes. I'm not sure quite where yet, but I need to book that up quite quickly. Um, again, I can't thank you enough guys for watching to the end of my video, right? And tight lines. Let me know if you catch anything guys.